Hello and welcome to a first training video about Emphis Wire. I'm Samuel from Emphis. What you see here is the cats of the Rhino with the Emphis Wire plugin loaded. You have the Emphis Wire command here. And here you have a collection of Rhino tools that are useful together with one wire layouts. Rhino typically when you start it has four views. One is the perspective view, another view is the top view, the front view and the right view. I typically work just in one view. I maximize perspective view by double clicking the title and you still can change the views with these tabs here. You can rotate the view using the right mouse button. You can zoom the view with the mouse wheel or by hitting control right mouse button and then moving the mouse up and down and with shift right mouse button you can pan the view. On the right we can change the view to layers. Here we see all the layers within the geometry, all the geometry is organized in layers and we will now create a new layer for our wire layout. Let's call the layer power wires. We choose a color, let's choose oh, brown. Okay. I have to make it the current layer. For that newly created objects go into this layer. And now let's create a bond wire. So this is the command for a new bond wire. And I draw a bond wire of 10 mm length using the grid snap. We see now a bond wire has been created and new layers have been created. We have sub layers of the power wires layer, we have the wire definition layer, the wire curve layer and the wire polysurface layer. Let's look what's in these layers. We just hide the layers by clicking the light bulb. Now we see nothing. So in the power wires layer there is nothing, only in the sub layers. In the first sub layer wire def is this wire definition object. This is just a straight line connecting the first bond point with the second bond point. Bond point. This line is the master object of the wire bond. It contains all the information about our wire bond. Then we have the wire curve layer and this contains a curve. We cannot select this curve because the layer itself is locked. And this curve rep represents the center line of the wire. We have a wire polysurface layer this represents the solid of the wire, solid object. We can see it better if we go to shaded viewport mode. This is the solid object. It's called wire polysurface because uh, the solid object is represented by several surfaces that define the boundary of the solid object. Also, this layer is locked. So, but we can also unlock these layers and uh, select the object. But it's not a good idea to do that typically because we do should always modify the master of object if we modify something. If you move these object, this object, also the other two objects are moved. And if we modify these objects directly, we can do it. But the next time we modify the wire definition object, our modifications to the other objects are undone. So. Uh, it's good idea to keep these layers locked. We can also copy our wire definition and then also the wire bond will be copied. So the copy command is here. Let's create some copies, some more. Okay, done. And now we have four wires which are copies of the first wire. The next command we will look at 
is how to change the layout parameters. We have just created a bond wire and it automatically created a layout. We can ch change the parameters of this layout, of this layout by, by calling this command. Uh, dialog pops up and we can choose between the bond type, we can choose ball bonding or wedge bonding, we can change the diameter to 0.3 millimeter and we can also change the cross section shape, let's change it to polygonal cross section and now we have a hexagonal cross section with six sides. If you like to do finite element simulations on your uh, bond wire layout, it's much better to have such a shape because it's much more efficient in meshing than round shapes. Okay, let's now create a new layout for control wires. I don't want to have this as a sublayer of power wires. Let's make it a top level layer. Let's make it the current layer and select the color for it, dark green for instance. And now before creating a wire, let's directly start by choosing the layout parameters. We can either click here or we can invoke all commands also by its command name. We can type layout parameters and we get this dialog. So I want a ball bond of 0.1 millimeter diameter. Let's now draw a wire. Okay, we have a wire according to this definition. Let's draw some more wires. Also, this can be a stitch wire. Okay. The next command we will look at is the stitch wire command. It's almost the same as the bond wire, except that you can. Uh, Let's, let's select the, bond, the power wires. In power circuits, you sometimes have these wires to improve the current sharing. On chips, you just do several bond points on a chip with a stitching wire, like this. Okay. And another wire, which has a more interesting shape. Okay. Now we want to modify the parameters of this wire. The next command is foot parameters. We get a dialog. For each foot of this wire, we have one row for the source foot, first stitch foot, and the destination foot. We can define the rotation. We can define the rotation reference. For the first foot, it is forward. That means this foot is oriented towards the next foot and for the last foot it's backward. This foot is oriented towards the stitch foot and the stitch foot is, has orientation bisector forward backward. That means it's the average of this and this orientation. I like now to change this for the stitch foot to backward and we'll see. Okay, this is now backwards oriented and we can change it to forward. It's now forward oriented. And there's another option is snap to axis. It will snap to the coordinate system axis. In this case, this is the X axis. And also the others I like to snap to the axis. Okay. Okay, we see now here it's snapped to the Y axis and here it's snapped to the X axis. And we should also see what happens if we define a rotation. This foot I want to rotate by 45 degrees. And this one, well, let's also do 45 degrees in this direction. Okay, not too bad. Okay. Then we also can change the loop parameters. 
we have the next command here, loop parameters. For each loop, we have one row. We can change the loop height to, let's say, two millimeter of both loops. We have the height reference. So this is the source bond. We can change it to destination bond. Let's say we change it here to destination. So we don't see now the control point because we are in shaded mode. We go to wireframe mode. Now we say this. And now the loop height of this loop should be referenced towards this point. We can change the height of this point. It's easy by using the gumball. Okay, this is set direction and move it one millimeter up. And we see the height of this loop has now changed with the set coordinate of this point, while this loop stayed the same. There are some more parameters in loop parameters. Okay, turn off gumball. These parameters define how the loop exactly looks like. I will produce another video where I explain how to use these parameters. Also, the food parameters have such parameters here, these support point parameters. And uh, yeah, I'll just show what's going to happen if we change this value to 20. This is for the destination food. You see, the food is now longer. So you can adjust the geometry of your feet and of the loops by adjusting these parameters. The next command we have is wire templates. This one. It opens a dialog showing you the templates we have. So by default we have two templates, the factory defaults template this you cannot edit, but you can use it for new wires. Or you can create a new template based on this template. Template 1 is an exact copy of the factory defaults template and you can edit it. You can also create your own template by clicking new. We call it my template. It will copy the template you had before and make this the template for new wires. And what we have here is now the loop parameters in this line. Let's put loop height of two millimeter for the new wires. And we have four rows for food parameters. The first row is for source feed of ball bonded wires. The second row applies to source feed of wedge bonded wires then a row for stitch feet and a row for destination feet. I want to change now the foot rotation reference to a snap to axis for wedge bonded feet, wedge bond wires. For source, uh, foot of a ball bonding wire doesn't make sense. It cannot rotate. Okay, now we can apply this template also to, to uh, existing wires. When I click apply to wires and I, can, and I can choose an existing wire, this one, for instance, and another wire where we see, uh, yeah, maybe this one. Okay. Click enter, apply all parameters. Okay. And let's look how it looks like. Okay, it applied the loop height of two millimeters and the snap to axis. We don't see it here, but we can see what happens if we move. You see it's aligned with the axis still. And here, in case of the ball bonding wire, here of course we have no foot rotation, but here you see it is aligned with the axis. And also if we create a new wire, it should now take the new parameters. Let's draw a wire. Okay, so it aligns the feet with the axis and the loop height is only two millimeters. 
Okay. Then there is also another method to apply parameters to wires. We can just copy parameters from wire, one wire to the other. So let's select this wire and select copy parameters command and select the wires we want to copy to. Let's select this wire and this wire. Press enter. We can select which parameters to copy. I take all of them and we have copied the loop height and also the snap to axis should be copied. Okay, it seems to work. Here you see it aligns with the axis. Then we have a command update wires. This is typically used when you need to clean up something, something hasn't been updated by MFS wire. I can show you a case where this is the case. So we can unlock, for instance, the wire curve and wire polyservice layers of the power wires. And then we copy a wire, but including the master of object and, and the other objects. So by, by the way about selecting, if you select like this, it selects all objects which are within the rectangle and like this it selects the objects which are crossing from left, from right to left, you have the crossing node. So sometimes this is easier, sometimes this is better. So in this case I do it like this. Okay, so when I copy now this wire, including the slave objects. I can do this, but typically, okay, uh, now I've, it's not what I want. Let's undo it. Maybe I use anyway this method and okay. Or maybe like this. Okay, now this is what I want. Copy. Okay. I have now created a copy and since MFIS wire expects that you only copy the wire definition object, it will create new wire curve and wire polysurface objects for the copied object. If you move this one, you see uh, it will not move these additional objects we have copied. So they are, these are uh, too much here. And now we can use the update wires command to clean up and this wire will detect that something is wrong here. We have an unlinked wire curve object and an unlinked wire polyservice object. For each type of objects, we can choose what to do. We can either choose to convert these objects to normal Rhino objects, or we can choose to delete the objects. I choose delete for both. And we have now again cleaned up. So sometimes you want that MVS wire does not handle these solid objects here, these ones. Maybe you want to further processes, process these objects and not MVS wire making something undone you have changed. In this case, you can create an unlinked object and we do this by this one of these commands. With the first one, you can create an unlinked wire definition object. With the second one, you can create the unlinked wire curve object and here an uh, unlinked wire polysurface object. Let's now create the unlinked wire polysurface object of this wire. So you select this command and the wire. You always have to select the wire definition object in order to make also a copy of a wire polysurface object and accept your selection with enter. And it creates a new layer, wire polysurface unlinked, and this layer contains the newly created object and we can move this object and you see it has black color like the layer here and if we move the initial initial object it will not affect this object anymore also if we call the update wire command it does not do anything it just ignores this object Okay, this is all about these commands we are going through. But there's also a document options page. We can show, have a look at this. So under tools, options, you find 
all document options and Rhino options. And here is a MVS wire document options page. You can, for instance, cho choose what is in your model, the direction upwards. Typically it's plus Z, but could also be different. Let's just switch it to minus Z and see what happens. You see, it flipped the directions of all the wires, except of this one, which is an independent object. It's the unlinked biopreservice object. Okay, let's go back to tools options. Go to plus Z again. Another thing is you can turn off drawing wire curve objects or wire polyservice objects in case you don't need them. It will be a bit faster the handling of the objects. If you later need these objects, you can still turn it, these on and MVS wire will update the objects and create the missing objects. Then you can also disable this one. This is uh, uh, to keep the edit points of wire definition objects turned on. If we uncheck it, then uh, let's go to wireframe mode. We see these edit points or control points. Uh, it's easy to move them, but when you hit the escape key, these are disabled. Then it's more difficult to move these points. You always have to first select the point and then move this point. And it's much easier if you, these points are turned on always. So we just go back to the options and we can turn it on again. Okay, so we have all the useful tools and you will learn about these tools in other videos where I'll show you examples how you can use MVSY to create your own bio layouts. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoy MVSY.